life cycle of visual force and lightning let me give you the basic structure we had a visual force space here we had a apex side server so it is a visual force page and this is a apex side control or maybe a server for that matter i can give server it is a client now first client is first client is requesting a page client is requesting a page client requested a page when a client requested a page server will be sending the page in the form of html so what type of page we are getting from server first time the page will be loaded html you requested server is sending the page back to the client in the form of html when you are receiving the code in the form of html and the page is going to be created first time the page is loaded once the page is loaded i am going to get the page let us say i have a page like this in the page i am entering some data i enter the data when you requested a page server has given html that has rendered on the browser now what the server is sending it is rendering the code in the form of html server is rendering the code in the form of html am i right or wrong so if you go to visual force architecture if i go to visual force architecture let us see this now how does page is going to be rendered here from the server from the server we are getting the page in the form of html so that html is given on the client's browser so when you request for any page the server is going to render the page in the form of html to the client so we are getting a html code which is rendered in the browser right the same thing is happening here when you requested the html code came and the page is rendered and we got the page i entered the data name equal to satish clicked on save when i click on save the request is going to the server now how this request is sent from the client whatever the data you are submitting whatever the request you are making that will be sent in the form of http post method from the visual force page if you are entering the data and submitting from the visual force page if you are entering the data and submitting or if you are requesting for any other page any other navigation it is sending the request to the server in the form of it is sending request to the server in the form of http post method so whatever i have requested it is submitted to the server in the form of http post then the server will receive the request process the logic the server will receive the request process the logic and it is going to give you result in the form of again from the server whatever the result is coming again it is rendered in the form of html so whatever the html we got with that html what happened the page is reloaded the page the page is what the page is reloaded when i received html removed once again page is created with the name this so so actually what is getting changed here only the message need to be printed but what is happening when you request a 
when you request anything from the server, server is sending you in the form of HTML. So, the entire page is reloaded. The entire page is reloaded. Now, there is no need of reloading the entire page. If you reload one element, it is sufficient. But when you make a request to the server, it will go in the form of HTTP POST, process the logic, whatever the response we are getting, we are getting in the form of HTML, that HTML is going to reload the page. Reload the page. We can avoid this. You can ask me a question. We have re-render concept. We have action support. We have action function, remote action. By using this, we can avoid this reloading of page. That's what we have done in the visual force. We have used when I click on a button, re-render one, re-render one and two, action support, re-render, action function. All these are exact functionalities, right? Re-render, action support, action function, action polar, action region. All these are exact functionalities only. They are going to partially load the page. Then why you are going for lightning? Every time it is not necessary that page will be reloaded. We also have a techniques in the visual force which can avoid the complete loading of page. But the problem is if it is one or two elements, I can write it. If there are a group of functionalities there on the page, if there are a group of functionalities on the, on the page which are using this Ajax functionality, again the performance will be going down because we are externally defining Ajax functionality to avoid reloading of the page. General behavior of the visual force is reload. My natural behavior is reload. You are abstracting my natural behavior by using some external functionality like Ajax functionality by using re-render, rendered, okay, action function, action. So if these uh, functionalities are increasing on the page, then obviously my performance will get down because that is not my natural behavior. My natural behavior is reload the page. Okay, you can abstract me from my natural behavior in one or two places. It's okay. But if you are applying too many functionalities and making it as asynchronous, then my natural performance will go down. That's what is visual force. So the general visual force is what? Request the page. Page is coming in the form of HTML loaded. When you are entering the data or requesting any action, go to the server in the form of HTTP post method perform the operation, response will come back to you in the form of HTML. When the response is coming, reload the page. Reload the page. That is the natural behavior of visual force. I told you, we can abstract the natural behavior by using some Ajax functionalities. But Salesforce is not giving built-in. You are applying those functionalities on the page and making us asynchronous. By default, page is what? Synchronous. You are applying Ajax functionalities and making them as asynchronous. I hope you are clear. This is the life cycle of your visual force. But when you go to lightning, when you go to lightning, same request. First time request. When you request anything, request. When you requested, First time the page will be loaded in the form of HTML only. First time when you call the page, in the lightning also, first time when you call, it will be rendered in the form of HTML only. Once the page is loaded in the form of HTML, look at this. Here we have an application with the two components. Component 1. Now we had name, because a lighting application is going to run like a components. We have created like this. Then I clicked on save. When you clicked on save, when you click on this button, now the request will go to the server as Ajax functionality. Now the entire page is not getting submitted. Entire page is not getting submitted. It is going to the server in the form of what? Ajax. Request is going in the form of what? Ajax call. It is not in the form of HTTP. By default, natural behavior of writing is Ajax. In the visual force, 
by default national behavior of visual force is http post and if you want you can get them into asynchronous mode by applying ajax functionalities or by using angular js by using some bootstrap okay or by using some scripting you have to externally embed the scripting to get the behavior but your lightning by default behavior is ajax the framework by default behavior is ajax asynchronous so because it is your natural behavior there is no obstruction on your performance now when you make a request the request will go to the server server will perform the operation then result will come back whenever you make a ajax call whenever you make a ajax call whenever you make a ajax call the response will come in the form of json in the ajax call the response will come in the form of json do you remember we have done ajax functionality s force dot connection dot query do you remember that code where query result equal to s force dot connection dot now how did you get the data we told where records equal to query result dot get records this is how we wrote the query do you remember that why why we wrote that because the response is coming in the form of json in the json one of the element is record the data we want to get so whenever you are making a ajax call to the server whenever you are making a ajax call to the server the response will be coming in the form of json when the response is coming in the form of json the page is not reloading because we are not getting html code we are getting the json the json will only refresh the element where it need to be are you getting my point now we are not getting the response in the form of html we are getting the response in the form of json only the element where the data need to be modified that element will be reloaded so this is the element where we are going to reload operation success it will not reload entire page it will only refresh the element whose data is modified because it is ajax call so in the visual force request is going to the server in the form of http post and getting the response in the form of html which will reload the page in the client side but when you go to the lightning when you go to the lightning now the request what you make it will go in the form of ajax call and the response would be coming in the form of json and the json will be replacing only the element whose data is changing so by default its behavior is asynchronous because of which the performance of the application will increase right so in the case if you look at this we are not discussing anything on the server side we are not requesting anything on the server side let it be a visual force or lightning server side operation remain the server side the same apex class same triggers same operation so nothing is going to change in the server slightly few changes will be there but 90% of the server side operations remain the same but what is getting changed now is the client side operation so the ui level is changing in the classic and lightning if you look at the classic and lightning major changes are in terms of ui so whatever the work we are doing with visual force that work is getting replaced with the lightning but the server side operation remain same slight changes will be there but okay hardly 5 to 10% of changes but most of the things are exactly the same what we are doing on server side so what is getting changed client side operations are getting changed so the lightning basically dealing with what your lightning development basically deal with changing the ui format changing the ui format now why the advantage of going for this lightning because i told it is asynchronous call it is not going to be sending a request in the form of html post it will be sending like ajax re-rendering will be small only few elements will be re-rendered okay we discuss advantage but life cycle is clear so basically what is changing in the lightning 
when you are learning a lightning development in terms of development in terms of development we are going to replace visual force with the lightning lightning components visual force with the lightning component you have visual force component and creating a page we have lightning application page okay and we are using lightning components visual force page with the visual force components we are building lightning application with the lightning components so ui is getting replaced the server side operation still remain the same i hope you are clear right okay this is the first story that's what i have mentioned here that's what i have shown in the first slide now let me give you first slide now look at this so if you look at this uh, lightning generally lightning is called spa not the other spa mm. Mm. so single phase application mm. now in the single phase application spa single phase application now in this what i told client and we have a server now initially we are requesting for a initially we are requesting sending a request to the server server is sending the response in the form of HTML, the page is open. Then I am going to enter my data or whatever the action you want to perform on the client side and request a service. The requested service will go in the form of HTTP post. Form in the form of HTTP post and the response will be coming in the form of HTML. That HTML will reload the page. That HTML will reload the page. I told you we can avoid it. We have a lot of components in the visual force which can avoid. But you are externally applying those components to avoid natural behavior is reload but if you go to the lightning if you go to the lightning if you go to the lightning what is the format of lightning if you go to lightning look at this so client send a request initial request when you're sending an initial request to the server we are sending an initial request once you're sending an initial request it will go to the server html is loaded here once the HTML is loaded, then I am going to enter the data, then submit. When you submit, the request is going in the form of Ajax. The request is going in the form of Ajax. The request is going in the form of Ajax. The request is going in the form of Ajax, and the response is coming in the form of the response is coming in the form of JSON. The response is coming in the form of JSON. This is a JSON what I received. I hope I am clear with this, right? Okay. This is the general life cycle of your lightning and lightning and your lightning and your visual force. Okay. Then come back to the next one. How this architecture is designed? How the MVC model is going to be designed? Now when you are going for this. How the MVC model is designed. So if you go to this MVC model, look at the format again. When you go to the MVC model, the format is going to be like this. Generally, in the regular application, what is the MVC? Model, view, controller. We have a model, view, controller. In the regular classic, what is your model? In the classic, what is your model? Your model is your database, which is nothing but S objects. Then who is your controller? Who is your controller? Control is FX. Right. Who is your view? So we are giving visual force. From the visual force, the request will go to the server and the response will come from the server. This is a general MVC model of your classic application. Am I right? The view is visual force or a page layout. We are going to create. In terms of development, no page layout. In terms of development, 
visual force is the view i am going to enter the data goes to the server which is apex class or a trigger goes to the apex then communicate with the database perform the operation and give back to the user this is the operation so any operation you want to perform it has to go to the server side perform the operation come back the same if you go with the lightning in the lightning mvc model is going to be slightly different I'll show you in the lightning the mvc model is going to be slightly different look at this mvc model this is the mvc model of lightning in the mvc model of lightning what is that your view controller storage now what was this model is your database control is your apex class this is the server side on the client side also we have a view html which is a component from this it will go to the client side controller so in the client side we have controller data client side mvc is there server side mvc overall application mvc is this is the overall application client side mvc in the client side we have one view controller and storage in the client side itself we have view controller and storage that's your data now if this is unable to handle if it need to interact with the data on the server then the request will be sent to server side first what will happen it will go to the client side controller it will use the data from the client side perform the operation in case if it want to perform any operation on server side data then the request will go to the apex class apex class will do it so 80% of the work is done by whom client side controller who is your client side controller javascript who is your client side database javascript we are storing the data on the client side using javascript we are writing the controller operation on the client side with the javascript so client side controller is defined with the javascript client side storage is defined with the javascript now if i want to perform any operation on the server side request will go to server side controller who is a server side controller apex class is the server side controller so in the client side what we have the html which is representing your page controller which is your javascript then storage which is your javascript so storage is in the form of attributes we store the data in the form of what attributes so view controller storage on the client side if it want to interact with the server side controller or database request will go from client side controller to the server side controller let me give you clearly in a simple diagram in the visual force when you click on a button what will happen it will go to apex class general i can write a code when you click on a button go to javascript from javascript call remote action from javascript call action function that you are defining but natural behavior is what when you click on a button it goes to the apex class for from the logic but whereas in the lightning if i have a button like this when i click on this button it will go to client side controller who is this client side controller now the client side controller will make a request to server side controller so directly from the page i cannot call apex class methods if you want to call anything from the apex or the database you cannot make a direct call you have to make a request to the client side the javascript is going to call which is in apex so request will go to submit client side controller client side controller will take you to server side controller server side controller will give response back to the client side the client side will display the response what we receive so anything you are displaying on the page will be rendered from the client side controller only 
the server side data what we are getting that will not interact with the page directly that will only interact with the client side controller if a page want to communicate with server side if the page want to retrieve the data from the server side the page has to request the client side controller client side controller will go to server side controller request the data then display it in the page so from component client side controller client side controller to server side controller server side controller to client side controller client side controller to page in the visual force from component to server side controller server side controller to page that is the basic difference of mvc between lightning and classic i hope you are clear so let us see these two diagrams in clear let me show you the quick overview of this now basic as i told you single page application where the life cycle of the transaction is happening from client to server server is giving the form of html the page is loaded whatever the data we enter in the page that will go in the form of http post response will come in the form of html which is going to reload whereas in the lightning you request a page and the page will come in the form of html enter the data when you click on submit the request will go to the server in the form of ajax why in the form of ajax why in the form of ajax because we are making a request to the server side using javascript we are making a request to the server side using javascript if you remember i told you in the beginning classes there is a concept called s controllers do you remember that before the visual force we used to use s controllers i showed you one small project documentation right there we used to use the same functionality now whatever the s force toolkit you are using exactly this what ajax toolkit now we are making a request from the client to javascript javascript to apex class from javascript how can you make a call to apex class asynchronous remote action remote action what is that asynchronous action function what is that asynchronous action support what is that asynchronous okay action region what is that asynchronous we are using those remote action we are using those action function for the sake of running the operation asynchronous only are you getting so from the javascript we are calling a remote action it is a asynchronous why because it is ajax call here also what is happening when you click on a component it is going to the javascript javascript is making a call to server side controller which is a ajax call which is a asynchronous call which will be running independently that is the reason why we went for remote actions that is the reason why we went for action functions the same thing here in the regular way the same functionality is used so from the form if you submit the request will go to client side client side will make a call to the server side how the client side scripting is making a call client side scripting is making a call to server by using ajax so it is a ajax call when the response any request that is made to the server side database or server side with ajax response will be coming in the form of json so whatever the json i received i was trying to display on the page this what i have discussed as the first point what is the second point we have discussed mvc mvc in the lightning in the mvc in the lightning if we take a mvc in the visual force we had a visual force as a view apex as a controller and database as a model object as a model whereas in the lightning we had a client side mvc server side so client side mvc means in the client side itself we have model view controller if it want to interact with the server side client side controller will make a request to server side then it then it will be meeting server side mvc i hope you are clear with this any query on these two points okay right let's go to the next one differences uh, satish uh, yes couple of queries yeah uh 
as we are making ajax calls to the server side right uh, can we make a, a number of a calls uh, yes a number of ajax calls to can make it no issue okay uh, as soon as it's been processed and we will be getting the json response right yes. uh, how do like uh, uh, how do this json response will be uh, encrypted or uh, it will be an analyzed That's to the to client side what is the okay uh, we d- we do have a components to do that right no no Th- that's what we are going to learn as lightning okay fine thank you now let us go to the next one let us understand okay look at this now when you go to this difference i just copied the slide from somewhere okay so what was this difference between visual force and lightning component so basically visual force is what you are going to build like a page entire thing we are going to build like a page how many times we have created a custom components in visual force most of the time we are spending in using existing components and building the page or did we show interest in creating a custom components okay the custom component concept is same like your lightning the custom component concept is same like your lightning but we are showing more interest in using the existing component rather than building our own components now what is the advantage of going for a custom components and what is the disadvantage of going for a standard components you are building a visual force page with a standard components now can you make any changes on the page block table can you change the properties of the page block table now when you say page block table right it will come in a proper structure i cannot change the basic view of page block table i can change the data in the table but i cannot i cannot bypass the basic structure of the page block table because it is a built in component but if i create same page block table using my functionality if i create my own component called a page block table i think we have done one list view component right list view component we have done where we can display list of records when i design my own component if anything changes i have to make on the page block structure what i will do i will not modify the page i will not modify each and every page i will go to that component i'll make the changes on that component automatically that changes are reflected in every page where we have used that component did you get my point do you have an access to modify do you have an access to modify the standard components of visual force no we are using it any changes if you want to make i have to go to the every page where i have used change the structure now i am using a page block i am getting a proper structure but i want to say display only it one to 10 rows in four pages i am using page block table now i want to say wherever i am using page block table it has to display records first record to 10 records then then what i will do go to every page and use the apex page block table there you modify 1 to 10 1 to 10 1 to 10 now when you modify the visual force page save again entire page is recompiled because this is a, like a page it is running like a page any change that you make on the page and save back it will compile it will recompile the entire page it will recompile the entire page right but if you design like a visual force components if you design your own visual force component what is the advantage now if i want to change don't go to every page and modify go to the component and give an attribute display 1 to 10 now automatically which is getting compiled only the component which you modified only that component is getting compiled automatically all the pages are getting modified so now what is the advantage of it the load time will be reduced compile time will be reduced right the same concept by default applied for everything which is like this now in some of the cases where you want to use the same functionality in multiple pages we are going for lightning okay we are going for a visual force component but lightning says everything you have to design like a component only i will not give you any built in components you have to design every component how you are designing a page like that you have to design every component there we design a page here we design a component are you getting my point so that's what the first one monolithic unless developer use visual force components and templates 
unless you create your own templates or custom components otherwise the page is what you are building like a single page whenever you make any change entire page is going to be modified whereas in the lightning where is the lightning we don't build pages we build components we join these components and say it's a page we don't build pages we build components join four or five components and say this is a page whenever you want to make any changes whenever you want to make any changes look at this i will build components component 1 component 2 component 3 component 4 component may have sub component i am going to build this join all the components and i will say it is an application now if i want to make any changes if i want to make any changes in this if i want to make if i want to make any changes on this if i want to make any changes on this what i will do i will not modify the application i will not modify the application what i will do i will go to this component to make the changes automatically that changes will be applied on this application now we are building individual components joining them whereas in the lightning whereas in the visual force one page we are building unless you go for your own templates or components the basic design pattern of visual force is create a page with the predefined components even though we have a custom component concept but we will be using very less regularly we, we got very less habit of using the custom components but whereas in the lightning everything should be designed like a custom component only i hope you are clear right that's what framework enforce developers to break the application to number of components then we can build a single page applications even using visual force but only thing is we have to use some extra extra scripting functions like ajax angular js react this type of scripting i have to use okay bootstrap angular js react if i include those things in the visual force i can also build what i am building with lightning whatever you are building with lightning same thing i can rebuild in the visual force page provided externally if i include javascript jquery sorry javascript angular js react and some other scripting and css if i use those bootstrap and all those things i can get exactly what lightning is doing but here what is the drawback if i have to add everything then the basic concept of automation will be lost we are going to the visual force or sales force because easy to build again if i have to include all the scripting and everything externally then because then the process becomes complex now simple funda boss if you go for an apex page block table the same i can write with html in some of the cases we have used a table tr td and build a table whenever we are learning a repeat concept repeat concept data is coming sequentially if you want we applied table tr td and made a table so whatever the page block table is giving the same i can build with html also but what is the problem you have to write entire code if it is a page block table simply i can say apex page block table value equal to so and so var equal to a column 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 the complete structure with built in css will come it is making my work easier if i don't use the built in components of visual force i have to design my own html and css to get the structure now we can implement with html and css we can implement with visual force component why are you going for visual force component because things are becoming easy Similarly, when you go to Visual Force, I can build single page applications, but externally I have to write a code for Angular JS, JavaScript, jQuery. If I have to write entire code, it becomes a complex work for me. But whereas in the Lightning, it is a built-in framework. In the Lightning, it is a built-in framework. Already that framework is included. So no need of writing all the complex code. Already interconnections are there. Just write the required logic that will run like a single page application. The framework itself is a single page. It is an event-driven architecture. Are you getting my point? The framework itself is an event-driven, so no need of externally you applying the concept of event-driven to achieve the single page. That is the reason we are going for Lightning. So it is not that what is available in the Lightning cannot be achieved in Visual Force. It can be, but we are supposed to write extra code, extra logics, and extra scriptings. It becomes a complex for you. Whereas something is coming to you as a ready made, I will try to use it. As simple as that. I hope you are clear. Clear for everyone?
now how the lightning development will be done i told you lightning development is like a components you take a mobile phone if you take a mobile phone what you are doing if you go for a mobile phone individual parts are there battery keypad screen okay then pouch what we are doing all the components are designed individually when you take a laptop ram is manufactured by somebody hard disk is ram manufactured by somebody cables are manufactured by somebody what the dell company will do will purchase different components from different different companies right assemble them and make and give you now if the ram is spoiled will you throw the computer now what we do if ram is spoiled will repair only ram hard disk is spoiled will replace only hard disk why because they are assembled they are assembled now same thing you take a reliance phone if the phone is not working throw you cannot repair because it's a entire thing is packed the entire thing is packed it's not assembled it's entire thing is packed it will not work for any other now if you take any other mobile phone it's assembled you can replace as per your choice if any problem is there you can take the particular component replace it so it is assembled assembling of number of components assembling of number of components i hope you are clear so at the same time when you go to the lightning it is event driven it is like a publish and subscribe model it is like a publish and subscribe boss i am firing an event now it is just like i am pushing my material in the facebook whoever is following me they'll get the material i published you subscribed i published you subscribed who can subscribe whoever is subscribing all of them will get that event so it is in the form of what event driven push okay publish and subscribe now i am one component i published an event whoever is subscribing me all of them will get the changes made on me whoever is subscribing me all of them will get the changes made by me i am making a change like right now name satish here we had a element name satish here we are having a component in the component a i am giving name satish a is 33 now component 2 component 3 all these components are subscribing i pushed now number of components are subscribing so all the components who are subscribing they will get the notification about my modification whatever the modifications that i am making all of them this component is only taking my name dilgar satish this component is only listening to my name this component is listening to only my phone number this component is listening to both name and phone number what happened now any changes that are made on my component will be automatically notified to all the components who are following me so the changes will be automatically applied for everyone changes will be automatically applied for everyone because it's a event driven architecture are you getting my point it is like a publish and subscribe model entire application will be running in the concept of publish and subscribe model i hope you got the basic idea about what is this differences you got okay then what is the next one we had so what is this what is this salesforce lightning we keep on using a word called salesforce lightning what this salesforce lightning is basically it is a it is used to build a responsive application for any device now if i build an application now it will be automatically when you say enterprise application websites if you build on mobile is one format websites if you build it is automatically responsive on mobile tablet and your okay your desktop but when you go to enterprise applications i want to make those applications responsive now based on your device automatically auto responsive so we want to build 
responsive application for any device, then I'll go for lighting. Now, any device means mobile, tab, desktop. When application is only one, then why should I build three applications? One for mobile, one for desktop, one for tab. I want to be auto-responsive. So, we can use this. You can use this to build a responsive application for any device. Then, Lightning will be basically using two technologies. Lightning basically uses two technologies. What are the two technologies? Lightning components, Lightning App Builder. So, what is that Lightning component? I told you, smallest units, reusable cores. Now, your Lightning will be using two technologies. One is Lightning components, other one is Lightning App Builder. When you say Lightning components, just now we discussed. Okay, what is that? This is a reusable units of the apps. I can use the same component number of times like VF page, page block table. How many times you can use page block table? Number of times. Is it only in that particular page you can use? No, I can use this component in any page, any number of times. Same, your components are what? Reusable units of application. Then components give you, okay, client server framework. Components give you Client server framework, client side MVC, server side MVC, and interconnections. Then, what is that Lightning App Builder? Lightning App Builder is what? Building the application with a drag and drop model. Lightning App Builder is what? Building the application with a drag and drop. Instead of writing a program, whatever the components are there, components provided by the Salesforce, components created by you, components okay, coming from purchased packages. Using those components, I want to build an application with a drag and drop model. App Builder is like a Visual Studio. It's like a Schema Builder. In the Schema Builder, what you're doing? Dragging and dropping and building whatever you want. Similarly, using App Builder, we can build applications by using the components provided by the Salesforce or custom components, what you have created or the components which are coming from packages which you have installed or purchased so app builder is a drag and drop model lightning components are creating a reusable entities so these two will be used in the lightning both of these together will give you salesforce lightning in the salesforce lightning development there are only two things what we are going to understand what is that lightning components lightning app builder if you understand these two that become lightning but to understand this it will take 40 to 50 classes right that is only the difference I hope you are good with this. Any query from your end? The basic idea is basic idea is clear. I have a question. Go ahead. Existing applications what are there in classic, those all if we need to migrate to lightning, yeah, then for separate what or kind of assessments we need to do. That is if you want to migrate, he has a question. Already existing application is in classic. So, how do you migrate to Lightning? Now, there is a there is a checking the readiness of your Lightning application. So, internally we have an option. We enable that option. Salesforce will generate a report for you and give you. And they say, boss, these are the functionalities what we are using. And these are the functionalities which are available in the Lightning. These are not available. As these are not available, rebuild. So, it will generate a report for you and give you. Okay, based on that report, I will convert it. A quick, a quick idea. As somebody has asked me, so how to convert existing applications into Let me show you how to migrate.
So the moment you log in, what you are finding here? The moment you log in, what you are finding here? Lighting. Just get click on this. When you click on this, now here you'll be having an option. Turn it first. Check it. This first before you migrate. If all your application is running on, if your application is running on classic, if your application is running on classic, if you want to convert it to Lightning, first we have to click on check readiness. Check the readiness. When you click on this readiness, the Salesforce will give one report. They will send you one PDF file which contain boss, these are the functionalities what are available in the classic for you, which you are using or which you developed or which I am providing. And these are not, these are supported in the Lightning. These are not supported. These functionalities need to be recreated. Like that, they create a report for you and give it. After looking at the report, we know what need to be created first before migrating. If everything is okay, we'll say okay. Are you getting my point? Yes. Then preview. When I say preview, how this application is now it's in a classic. How this application will look like? How this application will look like in look in lightning? So just give a preview. It will not convert. Just show you the preview how it look, looks in lightning. Just showing a preview of it. Then optimize the features and creation of your domains and all those stuff. We'll come back to this. Now, for whom the lighting should be there? Now, you want the lighting to be available for which users? Now, for every user you want to give or for which user? Because for every license, it will not be supporting. If you purchase a database.com license, it will not support. If you purchase a work.com license, it will not support. If you take an integration user license, it will not support. Our general licenses are what? Salesforce license, Salesforce platform, authentication, identity, and we have, again, charter, communities. For those licenses, it is going to support. If anybody has purchased database.com license, anybody has purchased knowledge, knowledge, knowledge base.com license, anybody has purchased knowledge only license, anybody has purchased work.com license, for those licenses, Lightning is not supported. So, whom you can add? Which user? Which users you want to add? So these users will get lightning features. Okay. Then turn it on. It will be converting into lightning. It will be converting into lightning. All right. So this is first check the readiness. Get the report. What after you get the report, then analyze it. Then you check whether it is suitable to migrate immediately or any customizations need to be done on existing functionalities before you migrate. Right, boss? Okay. Now this is how we are creating. So Yes. Okay. In that report, we will get complete information what uh, what we need to build in Lightning. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And those things we are going to learn now in further classes. What is that? Means whatever we need to build in that report, we will get uh, information about what we That's need to build. It. Now some functionality you have created that is not supported in the say Lightning. Let us say. Now let us say. Now. Let me give you, as you ask the question again. This is a good document for this. Let me give you. If you look at the standard documentation of Salesforce, they are given a comparison charts. Now look at this. This is how the functionalities are given. So if you go for Lightning, all these standard objects are supported. Lightning supports all the following standard objects. Classic also supporting. Calendar events, assets. Now if you look at this, First one is lighting. Classic is not supporting performance chart, assistant chart, news, key details. They're not available in the classic. We're getting in the lightning. Then similarly, what is available, what is not available in the lightning. So you look at some of the functionalities. Some are there in the classic, few of them are not there in the lightning. Look at this. Now, classic has 
similar opportunities, big deal alerts, whereas the lighting don't have the concept. So if you have any business tools which are defined on similar opportunities and big alerts, now if you convert into lighting, you don't get the functionality. But still you want those functionalities, then what should I do? I have to create a custom components for achieving that functionality, add them to your pages. Now your application is the classic, you already have some rules related to big deal alerts, already have some rules related to similar opportunities, but they are not supported in the lighting, but you want those functionalities. So what should you do? You have to build custom functionality to achieve those. Now the custom functionality you have to achieve by using lightning component and add them to the pages and then convert it. Are you getting my point? So some of the functionalities which are there in the classic are not supported by the lightning. Some of them, most of the features are supported, few, few options. If you look at the charts, you can look at this. Only what we found here, big deal alert, similar opportunity. Apart from that, apart from that, everything we are getting, right boss. So compare the chart, the same whatever the chart we are comparing, in the similar way they compare, check the existence of metadata, then give you a report. As for that, you can do it. Now we have solutions and SOS available in the classic. They are not available in the lighting. If you have any business rules, again, they will notify you. Look at this. Follow reports, report notification, available in the lighting, not available in the classic. Schedule dashboard refresh, available in the classic, not available in the lighting. So if you have any functionalities which are already designed on those, that that need to be re-implemented with the lightning component to have the same scope. Right. That's what the readiness is going to give you. Right, boss? Okay. Now, what is not available in the lightning? These are the things which are not available in the lightning. Just go through the, this will be keep changing time to time based on the version. Go through the latest document and see what is not available or not supported in the lightning. What is not supported in the lighting? We can go through it and get the idea what are available in the classic, which are not supported in the lighting. Additional features will get it, no problem. But what is there in the classic, not available in the lighting? This are the concerned topics. So this we don't have any version for lightning and like the same thing which we follow for sales, that is the same version, right? Same. See, now your version control is different from a lighting uh, versioning in the Salesforce. Your Salesforce is not a versioning. Now, the version of the application they are giving, version of the API. So, it, it doesn't make any difference. Basically, if you are going for an application with version controlling, there is a scope of asking like which, whatever version we upload it. Is the Salesforce version is same for Lightning as well as Classic? Because same API, same. The only difference is we used to call course.com platform. Now, they are calling Lightning platform. As simple as that. Because I am promoting Lightning, I made Lightning platform. Tomorrow, if I introduce something as a XYZ platform, I want to sell one more product called XYZ, I'll see XYZ platform. That is my company, is my product. Okay, thank you. Right. I hope I'm clear. Okay. Chalo. Let's start with the next one. How to start with your lighting? If you want to start with your lighting, the primary thing is you are supposed to create a domain. Why domain? What is the advantage of having your own domain? Right now, you are going with login.salesforce.com. What is the advantage of having your own domain? If you create a domain, what is the extra advantage we are going to get? If I create a domain, I can customize my login page. Right now, whatever the standard login page you are getting, that can be customized. Example. Now, this page they embedded. Now, basically, what is this page? What is this page? They are using a Salesforce. It's a Salesforce login, actually. If you log in, you'll get into the Salesforce login screen. Right. So, basically, if you have your own custom domain, if you are going with your custom domain, you can customize your login pages. Second, login properties. 
Now, if I go for a domain, I can say login with Salesforce, login with Facebook, login with Google Plus. Now, most of the website when I open, most of the website when I open, what they get? Login with Facebook. Website is Amazon, but they say login with Facebook, login with Google Plus. The type of the type of security settings or login settings we can modify when you have okay when you have domain. When I have domain, I can say log into Salesforce from Facebook, username, password. Log into the Salesforce with LinkedIn, username, password. Log into Salesforce with Gmail, username, password. That login security issues we can modify if you have your own domain. With the login dot salesforce.com, I cannot create this. I can allow the people from external, I can allow the people with external IDs to log into my organization only when I have my custom domain. Like I can create at the, at the bottom. At the bottom, I can keep Facebook, LinkedIn, Gmail, Twitter. Click on the Facebook, enter your Facebook username and password, log into Salesforce. Provided the corresponding settings are set. If you want to set that authentications, authentications, authorizations, then we need to have your own domain ID. With the login.salesforce.com, we cannot do it. The second, the okay, first issue is customization of login page. Second issue is we can authorize the people to log into our application with a third party. So modifying login settings. Third one. Now, if I use login.salesforce.com, how many application, how many accounts I can open on a single browser? I opened this login.salesforce.com working. If I give login.salesforce.com and I give another organization username, password, what will happen? The old will be lost, new will be coming. At a time, only one org we can work. At a time, I can only work with one production or one sandbox. Or one production and one sandbox. Only one production will open on one browser. Right. I want to work with multiple organizations. Multiple environments I want to work. Okay, production 1, production 2, production 3. I want to work on the same browser. Then it is not possible unless you create domain. If you create your own domain, then IPs will be, then your domains will be different so i'll be able to work from a single browser right now from one browser i can log into only one account's production if i try to log into another account old is lost a new one is open but if i go for your ip address i can work with the multiple or accounts from a single page i hope you are good with this so if you create your own domain login page can be customized second one login settings can be customized and I can work with multiple arcs from the single browser. Now, how your domain names will be? Domain name will not be same for everyone, boss. The format of domain name. If you create a domain name on sandbox, format is different. Production domain name is different. Developer edition is different. Right now, you are creating a domain name on developer edition. The URL will be different. So, let us see. Domain URL. So let me create look at this for a sandbox you'll be getting a different structure let us see what type of structure we are going to get So look at the structure here. Now, yeah. I'll just show the structure, otherwise I'll type it.
basically when you go for it what will happen your company name company name then followed by your edition your developer edition you go with a sandbox company name edition company name edition your server instance will come in the domain name your server na0 na1 like that you will be getting if it is a production we don't get like that so because we have a developer edition i can show the developer edition sandbox okay chalo let me create I'll create a domain name on the sandbox. I'll create and show you. So how are you creating this domain name? Setup, administer, domain management, my domain, so look at this. Now how you are getting name of your company dot your sandbox name dot your sandbox name dot your server instance dot my salesforce.com how are you getting here your company name dot your sandbox name dot instance of your sandbox dot my dot salesforce.com this is for sandbox your company name and hyphen sandbox hyphen instance of your sandbox dot my dot salesforce.com now same i am logging into i'll try to create from my production So your production, developer, and sandbox, all the three have different formats. Let me go to my production. In the production, we had a demand management. What was that? Your company name dot my dot salesforce. .com. Your company name dot my dot salesforce. .com. So here the production will be coming as company name dot my dot salesforce. .com. Again, there in the developer edition, you get a developer hyphen your developer in environment. The URL for the developer edition is different. You get a developer edition. Developer ED we are going to get. So production is company name dot my dot salesforce dot com right it is for the production so same let us go to your trial version so let me create one separate account for you
So right. So let us create the domain. If you want to run the lighting components, it is a must that you have to have a domain. With the login.salesforce.com, you cannot write lighting application. If you want to run a lighting application or a components, it is a must that you should have custom domain. Your organization should have your own domain name. Then only you can create or run lightning components. So let us see this example. I created, I am running this application. Lightning components require domain. Please contact your system administrator. So without a creation of domain, you will not be able to run the lightning application. Lightning application developed through programming. So what I am doing, I was supposed to create my domain name. So go to user interface. What you are finding here? Company settings my domain so what is the format in which you are seeing dev edition my salesforce.com so if it is a production company name my dot salesforce.com sandbox your company name sandbox name server instance my.salesforce.com if it is a developer edition dev edition my.salesforce.com check the availability register the domain already taken by someone else register the domain so it takes some time to activate the domain so once this domain is activated then we will be able to run it what is the first prerequisite? If you want to work with the lightning, what is the first prerequisite? We are supposed to create a domain. We are supposed to create our own domain. So let us wait for the file to complete. So before the domain is created, let us have a quick overview of lightning view. In the lightning, in the classic, you find applications on the right corner. Here we say application tab, list of applications, list of application. Then we get a scroll down, we find. Second, if you want to see a list of all the tabs, on the tab panel, we have a plus sign. When you click on the plus sign, we get list of all the tabs. Here, the tabs will be at the bottom. These are the list of tabs, what are available. There in the classic, what we do? In the tab panel, we have plus sign. We click on the plus sign, we get list of all the tabs. But here in the lightning, the tabs are available at the bottom. We can see these are the list of applications. These are the list of tabs. Okay. The next one. Then search setup, searching for a particular user. Okay. Now look at the point. This is a user logout switch to classic. Logout switch to classic. If you want to switch back to classic, this is a switch to classic. Then add username. If you want to add any user to lightning, we can add here. Add this user to lightning. So settings, logout, switch to classic. Then this is a notifications. Any alerts, notifications. This is a setup menu. There we guide, find what? Username, setup we find. Here also here, setup, developer console. Setup, service setup and developer console. Setup developer console. Then here, any help documents you require, you can go with the help documents. Then quick action. These are global actions. Log, log a call, poll, whatever you find on the top of the record. Okay, post a message. Okay, polls, survey, question, all the quick action. Okay, global action. Global actions will be seen here. Then here, when you go to the 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 next generally in the classic what do you find in the classic you find setup administer build deploy monitor 
what are the four options ports.com options we are going to find ports.com options we can find as administer build deploy monitor but whereas here we will be finding administration platform platform tools then company settings company settings what are these administration administration platform tools and settings what are the three administration platform tools and settings so the navigation process is different here compared to the classic the navigation process is completely different here compared to the classic now okay so let us see you <coughs> let me give you as the navigation is different you can search for the option from here so let us see whether file is created or not excuse me sir hmm. yes on settings we have set up and service set up two options we are there what is the service code first oh, okay. then we understand the service setup oh both are different yeah different yes Oh, yeah, okay. What is your query? It will be shown here also that it is completed. When it is done, you will be getting a readiness here. Okay. Okay. So be, before that, let us give two other formats. So we have the namespace namespace also given here so in the lightning if you want to use it uh, it takes some time before it takes let us complete one more a quick introduction about namespace generally what is the purpose of namespace i think in the integration class also we had discussion today what is the namespace group of similar elements are grouped okay all the related elements are grouped under one name all the functionalities related to one all the related functionalities are grouped under one name which is called a namespace which is called a namespace as i told you now in the morning we had an integration class now we have a lightning class now there's a person called kumar sitting in the integration kumar sitting in the lightning there are three kumars in my integration lightning when i say kumar there is a kumar in the integration there's a kumar in the lightning who will respond now there's a question ambiguity now that's why i told kumar in the lightning class now only you will be responding so all the people who are attending this lightning for you i create a group number called 0103 so this is your batch number so all these people have got a batch number of 0103 so when you make a call to front desk they'll ask you first what is your batch number when you say 0103 then they'll be sharing the corresponding information or material right so all the people who are attending this batch okay all of you are related to this batch so for you i have given a name called 0103 otherwise what happened if you make a call i am kumar in the entire database there are a lot of kumars then how do i understand so what they have done all the related things they have grouped under one name under one name which is called namespace now how do you refer this how do you use this namespace one last time let me check otherwise i'll go to okay now how do you use this how do you refer this in the namespace listen to the point in the visual force in the visual force you are using fx colon right why are you writing that fx colon or else some cases you also wrote some case you also wrote force okay interview force c colon custom component c column we are written right so why are you writing fx colon why are you writing force colon why are you writing c colon there is a namespace. There is a namespace. All the components which are designed for the UI by the Salesforce, they are kept under a namespace called Apex. Apex colon. So like that, if you are creating any namespace, namespace is not a must. If that lightning application, what you are building is for internal purpose. This namespace is a must. If you want to deliver this application to some other people. 
if you want to deliver this application outside your organization anybody outside your organization want to reuse the components what you have created or functionality what you created i have to create a namespace and deliver it let us say boss you went to app exchange there is an application called recruiting app you told install you told install already in your organization there is a table called position now we are going and installing app exchange going to the app exchange installing recruiting in the app when you install in the recruiting app also there is an object called position but already in your organization there is an object called position now when two objects are created in the same org let us say they are created now when i say position which object are you referring so if you are trying to deliver any any application or a functionality or a component outside your organization using lightning then namespace is a must if you are building within your organization for internal purpose namespace is not mandatory namespace is not mandatory if you are trying to use that lightning application within your organization outside the organization you want to deliver like a package if you want to deliver this application like a package to any other organization then namespace is a must if you are using a namespace look at this this is how we are giving if you don't give any namespace we say c colon in the place of namespace we use what c colon component name c colon interface then if you want to use any apex class straight away class name if you want to use any object straight away object name if you want to use a field straight away field name same if you go with a namespace if you create a namespace every element you want to refer should be referred with namespace namespace colon component namespace colon event namespace colon interface namespace colon class namespace colon object namespace colon field look at it even the field also your namespace underscore underscore amount underscore underscore c every element you are trying to refer should be referred with the namespace colon that is the reason unless you are giving this application outside we don't create namespace otherwise the program become lengthy format are you getting my point so is the namespace is a must it is not a must but if you want to deliver it outside the sales force it is a must what is the purpose of the namespace that is to avoid naming conflicts the namespace is used for avoiding naming conflict i hope you are clear clear about the namespace okay now look at this domain now domain is ready what is the option we got login and the login you got here login dot okay now it is changed here now you have created once you have created what is the option we had deploy to click on deploy to users no you can change boss you want the people to log in only from lightning 0103 dev edition or you want the people to log in from login.salesforce.com even though you created domain people can log in from your domain as well as login.salesforce.com you don't want to people to log in with login.salesforce.com you can go to login policy you can say anyway if you enable this what happened only can log in from edition your domain name i hope i am clear with this so we have created a domain once you have created a domain go back to your application run it again now you got this is first tab right boss so this is how we have created a domain once you created a domain your lightning applications and lightning components will run i hope you are clear with this so what are the steps involved in creation of domain the first topic so you know how to access your material right steps to create domain satish uh, even can we create this domain for the uh, uh, i mean apart from the lightning for the visual 
so we can good. create we can create for lighting is a must okay thank you what is the navigation we had so if you want to go with the classic in the classic navigation is setup administer domain management then we had my domain enter domain name check the availability once domain name is active click on login click on deploy to all users same domain name if you want to create in the lightning in the lightning how do you create is not username so setup this icon when you click on setup you get the setup menu then we got settings company settings my domain process is the same what is the navigation we have we have setup company settings my domain the same story so creating the domain once the domain is created then i'll be able to run the application excuse me sir yeah can we uh, create only one domain for AR? only one domain will be created not one domain you cannot create only one domain will be created once you create you will not be able to deactivate you will not be able to change it okay thank you domain will running the lightning yes sir satish i have a question Yes. Uh, so, if there is any existing domain in the uh, classic version, uh, the can same domain can use it. See, boss, company okay. will have only one domain. If it's already created yeah. in the classic or lighting, doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. I need it. Yeah, so, it's not mandatory. Yeah, it's not mandatory that uh, we can we need to create a domain name no, uh, when we migrate necessary. to oh. domain name. once it is created it is created it cannot be deactivated or modified developer edition is a developer edition how are you getting your domain name
the custom domain name basically it will be a company company name box name This is how we are giving. What are the advantage of having a custom domain? We can customize login page. We can customize login settings. Login from single sign on. We can work with multiple org. This is how we are getting. Boss, it is a very basic question. How do you know the server instance? You will be finding in the URL, right? The moment you log in, you will be finding, you will be finding on URL. Go to your URL, you will be finding the server instance. It is AP4. AP4. What is the other, other way we can find? What is the other way we can find? Go to once you log into your organization, you'll be finding whether it's a production array. So you will say once you log in. To your organization under the company profile we have company information you'll be finding the information about the server what you are using in case if you have a domain name enabled if it is a production if it is a production your domain name is enabled you are getting a domain name on the top you're not finding an instance of your server you want to find out the instance of your server go to company profile company information you can find what instance is this right Right, boss? So, this is how we have created a domains, and these are the advantages of going for a domain. Then, namespace. Namespace. What is the use of namespace? It is a collection of related elements under one name. This is used to avoid naming conflicts. Elements can be Class, object, pages, components, interfaces, if you want to deliver application or functionality outside your organization, organization namespace is a must steps to create namespace
steps to create namespace how will you create the namespace don't create the namespace boss check it out don't complete the operation okay look at this how will you create the namespace under the packages you'll be finding create packages now we had here developer packages what are you finding here namespace check the availability it is available review my selection then when you click on save it will be creating the so i'm not creating if you create everything has to be referred with namespace so what is the process here setup build build create packages so we have edit edit continue enter the namespace check the availability review and save again i'm suggesting don't create setup Go on review. This is how we are giving a namespace. So if we create a namespace. if namespace is created if the namespace is created how do you refer namespace dot class name namespace dot object name namespace dot everything should be prefixed with your namespace namespace underscore underscore not straight away namespace underscore underscore look at the quick documentation what i have opened here so your namespace underscore underscore object namespace class name namespace class name if it is an object name scale namespace underscore underscore object name I'll give here field name uh, Satish yeah yeah I see I mean if there is any issue with the namespace uh, maybe you know after deploying for any kind any related I mean now related to any kind of functionality unique throughout the sales uh, organization not only for your company the namespace name is a unique throughout the entire sales force now how you got your hidden character record id which is unique throughout the sales force okay and it is like that the namespace is unique throughout the throughout it is throughout so if you are deploying any if you are deploying a package if you are deploying a package we mm -hmm. only have an option what is that deploy all or it will be reverting back so generally when you go for a deployment using ant there is an option okay what should happen in case of failure revert back revoke all so mention what need to happen if there is a failure in the ant automatically it will be reverting back okay
this is how we have created quick examples I have given so namespace creation and domain creation so your org is ready for working with the lightning your org is ready for working with the lightning as i told you there are two things available lightning component bundles other one is lightning app builder lightning app builder is what drag and drop model just i'll show a quick example of it before we wind so what is some new query somebody has asked what is that uh, sir if we have any custom fields on a standard objects and all then awesome. how we can call through our how do you use a custom field on a standard object object name dot uh, if i custom it will be used doesn't matter whether it's a standard object or a custom object if it is a custom field it will have underscore underscore c now let me give you so i forgot to mention one point at the beginning what is the prerequisite for learning this course right if you want to learn, learn lightning you should have a prerequisite of a basic idea about classic apex programming and then it will be easy for you to understand what exactly it is so and also you should have the basic administrative level what is an object what is a field how the workflows automation that should be basic idea you should have it okay then if you have basic idea about how the javascript will be written basic idea about javascript and knowing idea about css is an advantage these are the prerequisites you should have apex knowledge and the administrative basic level knowledge like object creation field creation how they are referred work to automation right then i will be assuming that you know all of this and i'll be starting the development okay right boss fine that's all from my end for the day so we'll continue actually